On October 10, Russia launched its largest bombing on Ukraine since the war began. 19 people were killed, and public buildings in Kyiv were destroyed. In the face of such escalation, Zelensky urged G7 leaders to provide Ukraine with upgraded air defense systems in order to handle the horrible air attack. According to the armed forces of Ukraine, Russia used more than 83 cruise missiles, 24 Iran-made Shahid-136 drones, and even some of the missiles were fired by Russian Navy vessels in the Black Sea into Ukraine. And this was the reaction to the explosions that rocked its vital Crimean bridge, connecting Russia and the occupied Crimean Peninsula. Ukrainian military claimed to have shot down at least 43 of them. This strikes highlight how difficult it is for a nation the size of Ukraine to properly defend itself from continuous Russian air attacks. And lack of air defenses is one of Kyiv's main weaknesses in defending itself against Russian strikes. Since Russian troops invaded Ukraine in February, Ukraine has received a variety of air defense equipment from US and European allies, ranging from portable shoulder-fired short-range missiles to longer more sophisticated air defense rockets. But as with its artillery, which is a mashup of Russian and various Western-made howitzers, it has no single overarching air defense system. The United States is scheduled to send the first two of eight National Advanced Surface-to-Air Missile System NASAMs, that it has promised to provide. And German weapon, IRIS-T, ground-based air defense systems, has arrived in Ukraine. The National Advanced Surface-to-Air Missile System is the first short to medium-range ground-based air defense system. It features a network-centric air defense system, multiple simultaneous engagements, beyond visual range, BVR capabilities, and is closely integrated and tailored to a country's integrated air and missile defense system, IAMD. The system can be deployed to identify, engage and destroy aircraft, helicopters, cruise missiles, and unmanned aerial vehicles. The NASAMs may make Zelensky less worried about Russian cruise missiles, but its shorter range could be a problem. NASAMs is good at shooting down planes, drones, and cruise missiles, but it can only hit targets up to 20 miles away, which is less than half the range of the S-300. SAMs need a clear line of sight to attack a threat, and cruise missiles flying low, especially in hilly or mountainous areas, would easily cut the system's acquisition range in half. So, with that, NASAMS is a point defense system with a short range. The newer versions of the NASAMS feature the advanced Ghost Eye radar, which expands the range and accuracy of the air defender. And Ukraine may be getting an older model of the NASAMS. NASAMS has been modified many times, and the US no longer uses the first generation. This variant used a ground launched AMRAM with an 18 mile range. NASAMS-2 employs the same missile, but has a better radar. The NASAMS-3 upgrade included an extended range version of the AMRAAM, capable of reaching targets up to 30 miles away, and added a shorter range IR missile, the AIM-9X. While the United States has not specified which version it would provide to Ukraine, it is most likely NASAMS-1 or NASAMS-2. While the NASAMS is a significant contribution, but it is not without flaws. It is a short-range system that depends on line of sight to lock onto its target, which is difficult to do at long range when attempting to intercept low-flying cruise missiles. It might also take weeks, if not months, to train the operators and maintenance professionals who will be in charge of getting the gear up and operating. Despite these disadvantages, Zelensky should be grateful that he is getting a NATO system, and it is possible that additional NATO states may make the NASAMs available to him. Why India rejected NASAMs too? Prior to the coronavirus pandemic, India was on the verge of purchasing the NASAMs too for US$1.86 billion. According to the US government's Defense Security Cooperation Agency, the proposed sale to India would have included five MPQ-64 FL Sentinel radar systems, 118 AIM-120 C-7 and C-8 missiles which is a surface-to-air variant of the medium-range air-to-air missile used by Pakistan against India following the Balakot strike, three AMRAAM guidance sections and 134 Stinger FIM-92L missiles. It was to be deployed alongside 
Russia's S-400 Triumph Air Defense System, and the Indo-Israel Joint Ventures Barak-8 medium-range surface-to-air missile. However, the agreement failed, the Indian Air Force has informed the government that it would rather spend resources on the indigenous, multi-tiered ballistic missile defense BMD program that includes medium and long-range surface-to-air missile elements. India's Ballistic Missile Defense BMD program, which has been in development for 20 years, is prepared to be deployed in the national capital area, with more stages planned to boost capabilities. At present, the BMD system includes the Endo-Atmospheric Advanced Air Defense AAD interceptor and the Exo-Atmospheric Prithvi Air Defense PAD systems. The IAF has pledged full support to the Indian BMD program and the necessary logistics to see it roll into operational service on time.